So in today's video, we have Paul Pettifer coming down here from Louisiana, Lake Charles, and he's gonna bring us some bulkheads. And I'm very excited to see what they are gonna look like. I don't know, but he told me they're very nice. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, it's a fraction of the cost compared to like Highmark or compared to the other competitors that we're going against. So I'm very excited to see how things turn out. There he is. Got Paul Pettifer, he just arrived with the bulkhead. It's been a busy day already. It's good stuff, look at there. There he is. Yo Dan, my brother. How you doing, you Super doing all right? great, we made it alive, it's all gonna be great. This is great, this yeah, looks good. Yeah. Today we are with Paul Pettifer from Lake Charles, Louisiana. That's right. I know you better as a barbecue guy. I met you at the Clean Show. Yes. And and we struck up a friendship. Yep. I'm so excited that you're down here because you brought us bulkheads. Me and Kelly presents, were excited. That's right. Presents. Well, I have a present for you, but I love I'll, it. I'll do that in a little bit. So, tell me a little bit. What got you into bulkheads? So I'm. Um, I've had laundries for 20 years and. Uh, we we didn't buy any from anybody. We had some that were in the store, and then when it came time to change something, I just started, I'm the fabricator in the bunch, and I just tried this, and I tried that, and really what I was trying to do is make the store bigger for the guests. So I tried to shrink the bulkheads as much as I could, and one of the challenges that you find if you're the operator, not if you're the manufacturer, if the manufacturer, you want whatever, whatever, uh, is to be able to get in there and access everything, even if it's smaller or tighter. And so, uh, right now we're building a couple stores and I renovated one and I just thought, how can we make this better? And so we thought about a walking platform inside the bulkhead and the utilities hugged on each side. Yeah, I'll get to that because I want you, to, go, I want you yes. to walk through your bulkhead. Now- So necessity. You yes, know, and, and, and we're gonna talk about what makes your bulkheads unique uh, against the others. But one thing I wanna do is, uh, so, so you drove down here, how long did it take you to get here? 16 and a half hours, so but who's drove, counting? He drove these bulkheads down to us, 16 and a half hours. And so I'm excited. Frankie and I did. Frankie! Frankie, Frankie, over, here, yes. Frankie over here, he's working. Hi, Frankie. He's, so Frankie's nonstop working. So being in the laundromat business, how long have you been doing this? 19 years so, and change. So you've been doing this for 19 years, a long time. Like Kelly and I, we've been doing this for a long time. So the question for you is, so each step of the way, Coming up to the to the example of do, purchasing and ma instead of purchasing bulkheads, you're making them. I notice how sturdy these bulkheads are, and I notice that they are actually made from someone who is in this business, mm -hmm. and that is what makes this nice. Now, what has taught you most? What do you not like about the other bulkheads in in the industry that has made you come to the decision to start your own business and to build bulkheads? Well. I I don't really, uh, I don't it, know that much about them. I haven't bought any bulkheads from anyone So you've else. never bought a bulkhead from, which I, is great. I've seen them, other people have uh, showed me theirs when I go to their stores. Well, I have some nice bulkheads. I'm mm -hmm. gonna show you my bulkheads. Mm -hmm. I think they're nice, but I think these are just a step above. I truly do, and it, I, I could tell that they are designed by a laundromat owner, and that's the unique thing about this. So when I thought about uh, building yours, Yes. You know, I could put them, build them in eight foot sections and mm -hmm. ship them. Uh, but I think a hot shot, it, I brought yours. I'm not planning on driving all over the country to install everyone's bulkheads. But <laughs> that doesn't mean that if someone says, I, I have this, we don't put it together and you can hot shot stuff. It's not that much, uh, trucking is expensive anyway. Yes. So we could hot shot them, you could bring them in. Uh, sometimes ordering, I've, I've talked about ordering other bulkheads. It seemed complicated. Now it is always complicated. So there's always a chance for a miscommunication or a whatever. And what I find is that I'm always prepared to fix a, a miscommunication. So if there's a this or the that on something small and it shows up in my place, I resolve the problem. I don't go ship it back and say, hey, this knickknack, this hole was one inch off. I just get my drill out and fix the hole. That's just part of life. I mean, it's hard to, if you pay an engineer enough money, they'll draw out the whole world. Well, now I'm broke and I'd, all, I have, all I have is a piece of paper. I'd rather just have a, a machine, a problem, a solve. That's how the entrepreneur way is. 
So that's what kept me from ordering bulkheads. They asked me a thousand questions and I didn't have answers for it at the moment. I'm like, well, I don't know. I'll just go build the thing. So the first ones I built, we were installing the next day. I had a bunch of work. I show up at nine at night, three in the morning, the bulkhead's finished. That's when I finished painting it. That's outstanding. And, uh, and that, that was the first rack that we built at Common Street, Frankie. And I like it. It's short, small. I mean, it's narrow. It's only one-sided. And I just thought, why do we do it? Why do they have it this way? Why do I have to get a three-foot wide bulkhead if I'm only on one side? We built our own fiberglass troughs. The troughs are a little bit more work. I'm not, mm -hmm. I will sell troughs, but I'm, I'm also happy if you buy a trough somewhere else and I just build the bulkheads. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, but that's what I, that was one of my problems is it was complicated to get and they asked me a bunch of questions, which I understand why. And I didn't have them. So for me, I just decided I'd rather build the thing than answer 500 questions and pay triple what I thought it would cost me to do it or something like that. My utilities are on each side. So the electrical's in this tray, hot and cold on each side. And I could walk right on top. So when I go to the next spot, this one I got to go around this vent. Just a little trash, it's okay. away. You know, just have a few little tabs of Velcro. Oh, I see, yeah. And hey. anybody can just walk through the store. Services, we're gonna clean up our Velcro. Plastics <laughs> we had, <laughs> boom. And just pick them right up. And I like how you have the electric all installed. You have the panel here at the end. See here. So these are light duty or light tops, and then this surf. So if you need to service something into the into the trough, so you just come down yeah. and move a board. Well, you, okay. and you can access your trough system or pipe, whatever you're going to have. Cut into it, right? These boards are easy to cut. If you your pipe has to come out, you want to trim one of them. Yeah, we did that on your other one. There's a vent pipe, so just trim around it. You could live with one board. If you just, you can walk on a two by 12 all day. So if you don't want to have to trim them, and you just want to have one in the center. And, and then your dumps can go in, bam. If you have two of them, it also serves as kind of a cover against trash getting in your open trough if you, if you don't have the lid on it. And all your electric and plumbing are on each side. Uh, man, that's, that's easy. So now I don't, have to, I don't have to have an ecosystem below the trough, below the bulkhead, lights and you know, six feet tall, and I'm not tripping over all the plumbing in there. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was 25, falling down was not as big a deal. <laughs> I'm a little older than that now, so the idea of tripping and, you know, injuring myself and all the work that has to wait on me to feel better just really bothers me. So I was just thinking, how can I make this easier where I can get in and out, have covers that look pretty, but it really doesn't matter because they're going to be lower than the machine. So it's not that they don't matter, but they don't have to look awesome because I want to hide them. I don't want the covers to pop. I want the machines to pop. Yeah, you're highlighting the machines, not the covers. Yep. You know, I noticed when I met you, something that stuck out more than anything was the Constitution and Jesus. Jesus, that's right. And uh, your love for Jesus mm -hmm. and your love for freedom. That's right. Can you tell me why, uh, what, your pa what brought you to the passion mm. of, let's talk about the Constitution first, in, in your freedom. Yes. What brought you to that? Well, I don't remember um, a genesis. I just know that I, re I remember thinking about people I'd met who didn't grow up here. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll use an example from one of the laundry things a few years ago, a couple years ago, a guy from Peru, I believe, and he was talking about running this business and how he, he couldn't go in this neighboring city because the, he had to pay the judge over there, the police took a bribe, whatever, he couldn't do it. And wow. I just thought, man, that's the, uh, not, no rule of law limits so many things. You can't enforce a contract, right? Uh, you, only people get their contracts enforced in a third world kind of tin pot dictator place is the people who pay the judge the most or send the judge the prettiest girls. Well, all of a sudden you think you're in and then you're out. Well, that's no place to stand, no capital formation, no nothing. And here, if you have uh, a foundation, equality under the law, then you get to do something magical, which is written right on this document. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights. And among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, not the establishment of happiness. Yes. Karl Marx talks about that. Did it work out? No, no, never no, does. no, 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 no. Go to New York City, look out the, I forget which, what, there's a big wall that says 100 million dead thanks to communism. And it, the number's growing, by the way. And so I, I don't want to import that here. I think that's bad. So as I, I thought through what uh, establishes freedom, what 
makes it work. It just kept resonating in my heart that this experiment in freedom in America, right? This was the first revolution that wasn't to depose one king only to import another one, maybe one more favorable to me. No, this revolution established something remarkable. This book, The Constitution of the United States. Do you carry that with you everywhere? Uh, if I'm breathing. Once okay. I'm not breathing, that's up to y'all. I have the Jesus in my heart, the Bible in my memory, flag in one pocket and a constitution in the other one. And it says right here in the First Amendment, it says that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people to peaceably assemble and petition their government for a redress of grievances. And so right there you have something it's unique around statement. the world. We watched our friends in Canada with the kind of trucker protest. And what did uh, Prime Minister Trudeau say? He goes, that's unapproved speech. Unapproved speech. And I just thought my whole Americanism just says hair on my back and my neck. Said, no, thank you. Unapproved opinions? And what is this, the gulag? If you haven't read the Gulag Archipelago have, by Alexander Solzhenitsyn, I recommend that to you. Russia. Yes, yes. he was uh, a Russian, fought in the Soviet army in, yes. it's a long in read. World War II. Yes. And, and then was put in a Gulag because he had an unapproved opinion. One other thing I noticed when I read the Gulag Archipelago is when he talked about the times when people would go into a home, when the, polit the political police said, unapproved opinion, you're going to the Gulag. I noticed there was zero armed resistance. No one was worried if they're in the police going to arrest someone that I'm going to have a gunfight in this building. And none of the people who were in there crying had any means to resist the police. And hence the Second Amendment right here it says, a well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And so those two kind of underpin one another, our, the ability to say what you want. It's not disinformation. By the way, who remembers that word before six years ago? It was not in the lexicon. All of a sudden now, someone up above me gets to tell me that that's disinformation. That's an unapproved opinion. I say, no, sir. Thank you very much. Freedom is better. And so I named this Freedom Bulkheads for that very reason. A bulwark, a bulkhead, a strength, a strong back against an intrusion, an erosion, an evaporation of freedom. And, uh, and you know, this first war, first revolution fought that wasn't to put one king in instead of another. Did you know that? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yes. Not, not many of us are talking about I understand. <clears throat> the concept that this country is wrong. a bulwark against freedom, a bulkhead for free or for freedom, I should say, around the world. So, so this is it. your, this is your, uh, one of them. Yes. Yes. But so, pursue happiness. We're going to pursue happiness pursue by building happiness. bulkheads for our stores and uh, sell some to friends who want to do the same. I noticed um, on a Sunday, um, I, I, was, I was waking up and I received a text from you of some scripture. Yes. And I read it all and I was like, it lifted me up. Help me. I, I just plugged away. What brought you to Jesus? And not, not, not to get me, now, I, I grew up Catholic. I grew up going to church every Sunday. And, um, but it seems to me like you wear Jesus on your sleeve and you have a passion for Jesus, Absolutely. which I appreciate. And a lot of people don't have the nerve to say it or, or, or walk the walk. Mm. And you do. Um, Luke and Lee Williford do. Yes. Yes. Um, it, it, you like you would wear a shirt that says, I love Jesus, just like you love the Constitution. Um, and, and you're very proud of that. You wear Jesus on your sleeve. I appreciate that. But at what point were you born like that? Or did, you, or did Jesus find you? Or did you find Jesus? At what point in your life did you find Jesus? Man, I was just a regular old 21-year-old, beer drinking, skirt chasing, stuff stealing, motorcycle riding, uh, dope smoking, uh, <laughs> punk. I right? just thought you were always but righteous. I, uh, you know, I didn't get arrested and the girl didn't get knocked up and, you know, uh, and, and this guy made friends with me in college and started a conversation about the Astro shirt I was wearing and then we made friends and then he invited me to this revival. Really? I said, what's a revival? He calls me from the payphone. He goes, well, you meet my friends from church, we'll sing some hymns and this guy will preach out of the Bible. So I said, why the hell not? I go down there and, and this guy named Jerry Johnson is preaching out of Luke 19, a story about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a tax collector and he, he figured out, so tax collector was a Jew who was a turncoat, 
for the Romans against the Jews, and he's on the outs. Everyone hates him. So when, when you're on the outs, you say, well, just F it and live it up. And that's what they did. They had money, so they were wine, women, and song. That's the reputation anyway. And he's on the outs. But he knew something was missing, so he's, Jesus comes to town, and Zacchaeus climbs a sycamore tree, the Bible says in Luke 19, to see Jesus. Of course, people on the ground are mocking him. Uh, like it's going to work for you, ha! Huh? And, uh, but he knew something was missing, and that resonated in my life, because no matter how fast my motorcycle went, I'd go home, and the next day, it's not enough. Uh, everybody thinks you're cool. The next day, it's not enough. The get affection or affirmation from a pretty girl, next day, it's not enough. Well, what's enough? Well, I didn't know. But I tell you what, on that day, so Jesus, he looks up, Zacchaeus is up, Jesus comes to town, the, all the religious people are lined up, and uh, he just looks right past them because they were here to impress Jesus with their righteousness. And Zacchaeus was humble over there going, I'm a desperate person. Everything I tried failed. I have a facade, but there's nothing behind it. And the Bible says Jesus looked up and saw him. And then he called him by name Zacchaeus. So Zacchaeus is going, Jesus sees me, which probably is scary. He says, Jesus knows me. And then he says, come out of that tree. And I'm sure the, the murmurs, right? You're going to eat with this terrible tax collector and he's betrayed our people and he's a sinner and all that stuff. And Zacchaeus comes down and what's he do? He repents. He goes, half of what I give, half I give to the poor. And if I've cheated anyone, I'll give them back four times as much. The requirement was twice as much when you cheat somebody. So Zacchaeus humbled himself. And I was in that spot. I'm, I'm in section 223 in the Lake Charles Civic Center, October 23rd, 1989. And I thought, I never thought about needing a savior until that moment. And I knew that all the other stuff I was trying was, you know, it wasn't working. And, and I heard the gospel that Jesus Christ came, laid down his, lived a sinless life, laid down his life for others, was crucified, died, resurrected on the third day. And anyone who puts their trust in him, he exchanges his righteousness for their unrighteousness in a grand exchange. My heart of stone gets taken out, his heart of flesh gets put in me, and I was born again that day, and I've never looked back. Outstanding. You, very good, very good. I love your story, and uh, I hope everyone finds their way to Jesus. That's right. And they will in one way or another. Mm -hmm. You own a barbecue shack. Tell I, me the name of it. Man, it's Paul's Rib Shack. Okay, and yeah. how long ago did you open this? Uh, Food truck about five or six years ago, restaurant three and a half years ago. So how big is your restaurant? Uh, 170 seats wow. inside and out, uh, 3,000 foot building, three big smokers, uh, two giant oak trees. I prayed, asked God for trees to make friends under, drove around until I found these, took about six weeks. Wow. And uh, this is my friend making adventure. So uh, what puts your ribs ahead of the rest? You know, I, you have to do six things to make great barbecue. Okay. You want them? Yeah. Of you have course. to have good meat. Okay. You know, great. You don't have to have wagyu everything, but it can't be the worst. You have to prep it right. So in the brisket's case, you got to trim it, trim the fat to a quarter inch. You have to have a decent spice mixture. Now, the mix in your rub isn't the most important thing, but it's it's good. You know, you have to make a plan. You have to uh, you have to cook it. And let's just pick brisket. Brisket's the king of Texas style barbecue. You have to get past tough, but before dry. There's a little window, and depending on the animal, there may be no window. Or maybe very small. If it's the more luxurious the animal, like a wagyu, the the window's bigger. Yes. That's why you want that. You know, you just pay a lot for that. So pass pass tough and before dry. That's four. Number five, you have to cut it right. So my first brisket, which is pictured on my, I have a wind uh, like a story wall when you walk in the mm -hmm. restaurant. It, I tore it in half because I didn't know how to cook a brisket. So it has, it has these long sinews, and it's just an example of. What does a newbie look like? We talk about it, the laundry business all That's the time. That's right. Yeah. A newbie, they don't know. They make mistakes because they didn't know better. And it's fun to learn. I mean, think back about the things you learned. Now, I, I wish I'd have known then, but I knew now it'd be so much faster. But that's part of the process. We grow in the process. You don't want to, that's why it's so tough for a second generation wealth, because you just can't do it. Anyway, and the sixth thing you have to do to have great barbecue is you have to run a clean, live wood fire. Other smoke sources are fine. I'm not downing any of them. Wood fire, okay. Wood fire. So not, not charcoal, not, not charcoal, not, charcoal, not just, gas, not electric, yes, okay. not that other stuff, wood not pellets, fire. Okay. wood fire. Now you can have good barbecue without it, but you can't go to here, Okay. right? And so my goal is to uh, cook food worth talking about. So uh, my joke is that we don't want to hit home runs, we want to smash windshields in the parking lot. 
I know it's going to clear the fence. Is it going to clear the bleachers? So I want it to be good. So you're, you're in Lake Charles. Is that right outside of Houston, Texas? So I'm two hours from Houston, okay. three hours from New Orleans. Yep. Okay. Wow. That's the best of both worlds, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Texas-style so. barbecue with Louisiana flair. And wow. I am the Bishop of Barbecue. That's my handle, at Bishop, at Bishop of BBQ. So that's me. That's okay. Great. Paul, I love these bulkheads so much, but I don't want to be greedy and not share with everyone else. So how can we get a bulkhead? How can people get in touch with you? Well, I, uh, yeah. So paul at laundryworld.com is always a great email. Paul at Freedom Bulkheads will be up in a few days, depending on whether when you air this. Uh, and we'll have freedombulkheads.com up as well. But today that's not up. Uh, my number is 337-794-9891 or paul at laundryworld.com. Okay. Thank you so much. Get a little something. What do I have? Welcome to Kentucky. Is this some Kentucky action? Kentucky action. Oh my gosh. You can only get I, that in Lexington, Kentucky. Is this in the yeah, holler? Bourbon. Is this, do I have to no. go to the holler? Not no, in the holler? you can get that in Lexington. That's Evan Williams. Oh you can only gosh. get that bourbon here. Single, single barrel single vintage barrel, yeah. Evan Williams. I love it. You'll like it. It tastes good. I like love bourbon. it. Man, I, you know, I like bourbon with friends. And you I like what else? Tell me what else I got in here. I don't know. A little something from Kentucky. What? I have a Long blast. drive, Kentucky bourbon. Long drive, Kentucky Then bourbon. Kelly got you some socks. She said he, he needs some socks. Hello, my name is Bourbon. That sounds like something I should wear at the CLA meeting, you know, after I'm drinking a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm drinking a lot, a You little. got that That's right. That's so great. Thank you so much for your hospitality. You guys have been great. I can't wait to get keep getting to know you. I feel like when I watch videos and all that stuff, it just helps you extend the friendship. I'm in these uh, laundry meetings to make friends. I enjoy that. Plus you learn Likewise. things from each other and that's always great too. I think I'm meeting all my best friends in the laundry business. It's, yeah. it's been great. It, 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 it truly, we have like truly interest. Yeah, we work yeah. hard, we take care of guests. Well, we... I don't work too hard, but I do take care of guests. Well, you have worked hard for sure. You didn't get here by not working hard. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Man. I listen to my wife, I say, she said, you don't work at all. No, I'm just kidding. Who is your favorite band, rock and roll band of all time? Oh my gosh. Who's the best? Whew. That's a, that's a hard question. Um, but it's easy to answer. I, the ZZ Top's the band that came to mind. Okay. But I would say that oh, there's like five or six that could have rolled off the Texas band. Yes. Yeah, man. Now, what, what makes you think of ZZ Top? Billy Gibbons, the guitar riffs. You know, I, Jimi I, Hendrix said he was yeah, the best guitar player like he's ever heard. It feels like high school. Uh, I went to a concert in Lake the Eliminator. Yeah. It was the, yeah, Eliminator, and it was the cleanest sounding that I've ever place that I've ever heard at, for a rock concert. I always wanted that ZZ keychain. I ZZ couldn't afford key it. ZZ keychain, man. You go to the concert and I have five bucks. That keychain was 10. Oh! In the 80s, yeah. You yeah. couldn't get that keychain. But you know, I, there's a lot of great, great bands. Pick. I like great U2, pick. I like, uh, you know, Aerosmith's fun, uh, Van Halen's great, all those great 80s bands. But okay. Today Crowder would be my favorite uh, musician. Uh, he's a Christian guy. I got to feed him three times and he's really great. Great musician. Outstanding. Well, thank you, Paul. It's been a pleasure. My honor. Yes.